Hi guys, it's Ozzy Osler. Um, just doing a quick video. Um, I had a look on YouTube over the past couple of days because I've been trying to build a forge. Um, but there's not been any real um, tutorials of how to make a smeltery forge. So I thought I'd make a, a quick and simple step to step um, tutorial for you guys. Um, hope you like it. And I'll go for it as slow as I can. But we we'll shall see what we've got. So I'll just leave our little house. I've just loaded up a single player game for this in a creative world. Just to give you a bit of an idea. So we'll just start from here. So first of all, you'll need a crafting table. Um, just to, on a side note, you can make these crafting tables. But if you knock it down, well, if you just have it in your inventory, if you pop it into your crafting area, you can make a crafting station, which is this one here. Um, and when you're in here, you can leave items inside and walk away, which is quite useful in this tech it mod. And this feed the beast, feed the beast mod. Sorry. So first of all, what we need is to make the seared forge is grout, which is sand, clay, and gravel in this format here. And that'll make you grout. And then we put the grout into a furnace, obviously with, with some coal. And we get some seared bricks. Right, and then for the furnace, you'll need quite a lot of seared bricks. And these are formed in a four block of seared bricks here, just to make seared bricks one block. So you'll need quite a lot of them. You'll need at least one casting basin, which are formed like an upside down leggings. You'll need one casting table, and these are to make you tool casts, which we'll get onto later, and these are formed by seared bricks in the shape of leggings. So a smeltery controller, like a chest, a smeltery drain, and this is what's going to drain your casting ingots, liquid, molten, anything out. These are formed like this. A seared facet, which is like a bucket. A seared tank, which is going to hold the lava, and some seared glass. I love this seared glass because it acts as the seared bricks, so you can make your forge completely see-through, so you can see every and all molten ingots and ore inside, which I think is the best for the forge, which is five, five glass and four seared bricks. So we'll need a pool of lava, ready on standby, it's, uh, obviously We'll have this on the survival map, we'll have to go and find this. But just thought I'd give you a bit of an eyesight. So first we'll need one, two, three seared bricks by three. So a three by three area. And it can't be any bigger than this. And it has to be, a, this is the minimum. It can't be any bigger, it can't be any smaller, it has to be a three by three. And that's for the base. And to start off with, we'll need seared bricks on the side, the back and the other side. As I said before, you can use the seared glass, which I do prefer, and it's a bit cheaper because you don't have to use so much seared bricks. And again, off through the back and either side, leaving the front open. Do remind, leave the front open. And then moving on to the next step, and I've already put the lava in these ones, we'll need the smeltery controller, seared glass on either or, so that you can actually see inside and a seared tank which is going to hold the lava as you can see in there it's got the lava inside and at the top of the screen you can see the amount and it's currently having which is 3715 so it can hold four buckets in total and the smelter controller if you know it works if I can just quickly grab a pickaxe just an iron pickaxe if I take this block out You'll know this has now come unlit. And don't be scared to knock the seared glass out. It does knock out with a normal pick. It doesn't need silk touch. But as soon as I put it in, it becomes lit. That knows it's on and it's working. And if you right click, you can see the amount of fuel with your lava. Your smell tree is the amount of ores, your molten ores. And this area over here is where you put like your block of iron, which will be shown in there. And this little ticker slowly go up 
as your fuel slowly comes back down. And eventually, I'm not going to wait forever for this, so I will speed this bit up. It will go to the top and form a molten liquid. And again, you can do this with complete glass, smeltery tank, smelt seared glass, smeltery controller. And again, you put your iron block, aluminium block, what, or ingots, or even ores. And this does act as a pulverizer, so you can put one ore in and you get two out. Obviously, this doesn't count for aluminium because, like in a pulverizer, you only get one out for one, one in. Um, and it doesn't do diamonds. You can't smelt diamonds. So anybody wanted a diamond lake, unfortunately that's not going to happen. So that eventually goes down to this nice looking Halloween mixture of red jelly. Which is actually molten iron. And you can see on there, we've done one block of iron, which is made from nine ingots. So we've got nine ingots of molten iron in there. But if you do hover over the smeltery controller, again like the lava at the top, it shows you in MBs the amount of molten iron, if you want to be a bit more technical. So we've got 1,296 MB of molten iron, which is 9 ingots. Right then, from this, to make it a fully functioning forge, and you can see the other one's got the red liquid in there now, so that's smelted down the ingots as well, we need one more layer. So one more layer all the way around. You don't need the tanks, you don't need the controller. You just do seared bricks all the way around. You don't need to do these corner bits, because that's just a waste of resources. But this one here, and that one there, and you can have it on either one, that's pointing into the middle of the tank. So if you had, say, a block here, you cannot put it on there, because it's not going to drain it out of the wall. It's not magical. It's going, to, it's going to have to be on one of these that's faced into the tank. And that smeltery drain is what drains the molten liquid out onto your casting table. So, again, I've done it all with glass here. This is seared glass, not normal glass. And you can see, this is where the smeltery drain is. That's what it's going to drain out of. And again, you can't make it any bigger than this, but you can make it taller and you can make it as tall as you like so again the faucet on this attaches to the smelter drain and I've got my casting table here and again faucet on the drain and a casting basin there the casting basin if I chuck quite a few blocks in there so that's full of blocks of iron in there now the casting basin is what's going to cast the blocks and the casting table is what you're going to put these in which is your tool casting which I'll show you in a minute how to make them um, and you put them on there to make your pickaxes so whilst that's smelting that down I'll just chuck some copper not too many because you want one aluminium to three copper it doesn't matter if you go too far over because it will just split them out in here. So we'll chuck all that in there. You can see the aluminium's there, the copper's there, which I love the glass for. So you can actually walk around and you can see it all melting. Ignore that block at the top. I'll get to that later. So you can see this is now full of molten iron. It's got 405 ingots. It's not full to the brim because the the liquid like anything when you melt something down it does become a bit more compact so we can fit a bit more in there but we don't really need to not right now but again if you right click on this the liquid will pour out pour into this and this will slowly fill up slowly and form a bit of a, a red cauldron comic option this will melt and you can right click it and you'll get your block of iron out of it. And it'll go down on there. So we've now got 396. Right then. So this should now have melted, which it has done. And you can see there's a definite two different liquids in there. So we've got yellow at the bottom. And there's orange liquid at the top. And if we hover over, we can see the orange liquid is molten copper. And the other one is aluminum and brass, which is from the copper and the aluminium mingling. 
and to select the two you just left click and it flicks the two the one at the bottom is what's going to pour out so if we want to pour out copper we select copper click there and it pours the copper out we don't want copper we want the yellow stuff so we'll click the aluminium bass we'll get a rod which I'll show you how to make in a minute and you right click it on your basin and you right click that which is going to form the casting so you can use your casting on your spell switch and you can use the same one so if you add iron in there you just click your iron and pour iron out I'm going to use two because it's a bit easier to explain so we've got only iron in there so we don't need to select anything else click that and it just pours it into the middle of our casting so I can take the rod so we've got a nice iron rod and take the casting out that's it right I'm going to make one for each one so I'm going to make a sword here, so I'm going to make a handle and obviously the blade and again I will show you how to make these in a minute and that's it so then we go across to so we've got a stencil table, a part builder and a tool station because we've already got the parts, we just need the part builder the um, tool station, sorry we're going to assemble the tool and on the left hand side at the moment it's set, set to um, enchant or repair so if I wanted to put that in there and if I had an iron ingot an iron ingot <laughs> I'd shove the iron ingot in one of these if it was an edited item that is uh, like my iron broadsword it would repair it into a repaired iron broadsword but we're going to make one so we'll go back to still to the tool station select the sword which will change the settings in the middle we'll put our blade at the top the guard in the middle and the rod at the bottom we'll get our broadsword and we've got our broadsword and again if you wanted to click the smeltery you can put it in there, you can add diamonds to it which add 500 durability so if I take that off there's no durability on there, there's 390 at the moment put the diamond on, durability 890 I could add moss to it which adds an auto repair which only works in the sunlight when the moss is seeing the sunlight um, and you can add redstone and many other things to that. Right, to make the stencils, you go to your stencil table and you get your blank patterns, which are quite easy to make. They're just two sticks and two wood planks in a four block. You get the plank uh, the blank patterns into here and you select I've already got them made down here, so I'm not gonna make any more. And you select your tool rod for your rod your blade for your blade so we'd want a sword blade which we've got down there if we wanted to make a, a large blade we can have a large blade and we want a handle the easiest way to know what you want to make is go to your tool station click what you want to make and match the patterns so we've got a blade for a blade handle for a handle and I know it's not the same but that's a tool rod that's a tool rod Okay, and these will make a blade, a handle, and a rod. So we go back to our smeltery, put the rod on there, pour it on, and once it sets, oh. I've not selected the right one. So I want aluminum brass. Put the rod on there. Probably not going to do it now because it's different. I'll just show you on the blade. So now we've selected the right button. We can pour it. And we can make another split cast. And that's what you'd use for all the equipment 
and pour it into that. And you can do obsidian handles, you can do slam, any different things. And that's it guys. Um, I'll just just swap to crafting mode just to show you the yeah, general idea. So you can make this as tall or as small as you'd like. Then you three by three surround the front, second layer, and the following layers. What the idea was oops, that was a bit dangerous, was this was if we got a monster spawner when my computer loads it. So pig. We could put the pig spawner up there. When it spawns a pig and it knocks them into here. Come on, spawn pig. Let's get around a bit. <laughs> Let's get an egg. And we'll spawn a pig. So in theory, we'd spawn a pig. Really nice hat, but you're going in there. He would go into there, and you see there's now a nice red liquid on the top. This is blood. You can actually make blood tools. And you can do that for anything you'd like. And if villagers fall in, they make emerald. So you could make an emerald farm by making villagers fall in. Um, so just for an example, if I can get a villager. I'll just quickly show you this. Knock you in, sorry dude. There's a nice nice little green liquid on the top. And you see in here liquefied emeralds. And you pour that into here and make your block of emerald. And that's it. Well thanks for viewing guys. And if you want any other tutorials, please let me know and I will make them for you. If you want a tutorial on what items to do which. I've made this quick sword before you came on, which is durability, auto repair. I put two moss on there to make auto repair. And it seems to be quite a good one, but we've also made pickaxes. But we've also got a series with Becky Darden that you would like to see. Um, and that's also on the link. Um, and that's it, guys. See you later. Goodbye.